Hello and welcome to Hold On With Fellowship Sunday School Lesson for July 25th, 2021. Esther goes before the king. Coming out of Esther, the fourth chapter, sixth verse to fifth chapter, second verse. Esther was in a unique position. She was uh, the queen of a Persian king. And although she was of Jewish heritage, she still had allegiance to the king. When you are under a king, you have to oblige to their leadership. And it's also um, uh, consequences when you are under a king. They have uh, things that they request, things that they decide that can uh, impact the whole nation. So it was uh, a, one would think this would be a blessed position to be in, but we will see that um, the ramifications of her position calls for tough decisions to be made on her part. Scripture lesson text comes out of Esther, the fourth chapter, starting at the sixth verse. Let us go into our scripture lesson text. So Hattach went forth into Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told all, of all that he has what, what that happened unto him and of the sum of the money that her man had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. And he gave him a copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Sushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for his people. And Hattach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hattach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded and answered Esther, Think not why thyself that thou shalt escape the, in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest the peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will, also, will fast likewise. So will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and I, if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for another blessed opportunity to come into your word. Thank you for um, another opportunity to grow in your word. We ask that you continue to bless us, guide us as we continue to seek to be more like you. Sing your will, I ask that you forgive us for anything that we've done that is not like you. And once again, return us to a right relationship with you. And if it's in your will, I ask that you uh, guide somebody to ask what they must do to be saved. And it's in your will, Lord, I ask that you uh, receive them and, and guide them to a church home where they can be utilized as a vessel. It's in your will, Lord, that go with us as we go into your word. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Esther goes before the king. Esther, she was a young Jewish woman. She lived in Shushan, one of the royal cities of the Persian Empire. She was not living um, amongst where the Jews lived. She was living inside of the Persian Empire. So she was living inside of a pagan empire. 
and she was uh, raised by her cousin Mordecai. And she had uh, been elevated inside of that kingdom to be the queen. One of the she was a queen of uh, King Ahasuerus, known as Xerxes. And the king he had uh, installed a prime minister named Haman, who um, one day he decided that the empire needed to rid itself of all the Jews, and he had a plan to slaughter all of them that on specific dates. Now, this was um, troubling to Mordecai because he knows this would put himself in danger. This could put all of his people in danger. And also, it could put um, Esther in danger. Even though she is a queen, she is a Jew. So, this was important that he relayed this to her. He, um, he had one of her attendants, uh, her attendant, Hadach, he... Um, he found Mordecai in the in the town square, and and he saw that Mordecai had um, been wearing a mourning garb of sackcloth, dusted with ashes, and 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 that means that he was mourning. He was in um, in mourning. That's what they did. They covered himself in, with sackcloth and ashes, and this is a, a trouble. This should be cause one to be. Uh, uh, troubled by this because why are you mourning? What is the problem? And Mordecai, he didn't hesitate to report what happened, including how much money a man was willing to pay to to cause this uh, slaughter to take place. He was adamant about this situation. And he uh, told him all the things and, and he uh, wanted Esther to know. So he supplied Haddish with a copy of the decree so she can see everything. In detail. See, the devil is very um, adamant on things sometimes. The devil is uh, seek When the devil comes after you, he's going to be adamant. He's going to come after you with uh, all full force, especially when you are doing something for him or when you are living for the Lord. He's going to come um, uh, subtly. And it's going to be sometimes where you're going to really need to lean on the Lord. And it's, it's not... Uh, a game when the devil comes after you. He wants your soul. He wants you to be destroyed. So um, don't find it a surprise when he comes uh, in, 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 in some form. It's, he's not going to come where you can see him and know who he is. He's going to come in a form where you're going to have to make a decision. And, it's gonna, and it usually is a tough decision to rid yourself of him and make sure and let him know that you are still um, strong in your faith and not um, wavering. So Mordecai, he requested that Haddad um, carefully explain the decree to Esther so she knew everything, all the details, and um, he was uh, making sure because he wanted his cousin to uh, think about it and, 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 and see what she can do about it. She is a queen. He went to the one that he knows that um, possibly could help his people. Um, why wouldn't he go to his, his cousin who he raised? And Esther, she uh, heard of this, this terrible thing that was going on and, and, he saw, and she saw that Mordecai wanted her to do something about it. Esther, she uh, sent uh, Haddish back to Mordecai with the re return message. She wanted uh, Mordecai to know the danger that um, would, would befall her if she went before the king. If you are not requested or granted um, a request from the king to come to him, you are in danger of death. If he doesn't call on you, you are not to come to the king for any kind of desire. That's anybody in the kingdom. So this is uh, something that will put herself in grave danger and this is uh something um esther wanted mordecai to understand this is not a simple request this is something that would take um her to really be brave and strong in her convictions see esther was a woman that believed in god and she um although this is a tough decision she knows uh, the the 
the kind of danger that her people are in. And the position that she is in would cause her to be one to make this decision. See, when you are put in position, it's uh, consequences that you have to be aware of. You're going to have to make tough decisions. When you are one that serves the Lord, you're going to have to make tough decisions. And when you are put in position in the faith, you're going to have to make decisions that are not easy. It's going to be tough sometimes. And the Lord expects you to keep your faith and continue to uh, do his will, no matter what the the ramifications of those decisions are. You are put in position. See, she has a high-ranking position. She has to make decisions um, that will impact all of her people. Will she just turn on them and say, I'm in a position with the king, I'm a queen, I'm not going to address that? Or is she going to step out on faith and allow the Lord to work in this situation? See, this is a, this is a, a tough thing for someone that is a follower, a believer in the Lord. What would you do? Would you turn your back on your own people, the ones that um, you love and the ones that are fellow servants of the Lord, or would you um, continue to walk with the Lord and allow him to impact this situation? Mordecai, he heard that, uh, that Esther was uh, alerting him to what danger could, could be if she... If she uh, helped her people out, and Mordecai, he made it clear that and no matter what danger um, that would befall her or, or she could not comfort herself, that her position was safe. See, he, he said, if you turn your back on your people and be quiet, the Jews would still emerge. See, he believed that the Lord would bring them through regardless. But he said her, for her and her family would die. Because she did not do as the Lord would want her to do, so she, so He said, "Don't it, it's uh, it's upon you whether you want to help or not. But if you do not help, you will be bringing disaster upon yourself." So He believed that God was going to bring them through regardless. But did she want to be used as a vessel, or would she turn her back on her people and see the disaster that would come? And Mordecai, he was urgently telling her about um, this this possibility and about this decision that she had to make, because she cannot depend on her position or being a queen or the king's attractiveness to her. That did not matter. Um, if the decree came down and she's part of that decree, um, she can be swept away. The king, kings in Persian country and other country, they had many wives. So she could be one that, that that fell under this decree and would be taken. So she cannot dis, um, depend on her position. She had to depend on the Lord and allow him to use her to do the right thing. What would we choose in this situation? And to her great credit, Esther, she fully grasped the point of Mordecai who raised her and she knew that um, he was adamant about what he believed she should do, and she sent back a reply to him, and she uh, and he opened up the urgent, uh, and her message opened with the urgent request to Mordecai. She she asked him that all of the Jews assemble in Shushan and fast together. They were going to fast and go without food and drink for three days and three nights. And Esther and her maids would do the same. When you fast, a corporate fast, this is bringing about the Lord's presence. This is bringing God into it. This is asking for his favor and an intervention into this situation. She is putting him into this situation. This is the first great, great step that she's doing. Blessing come from fasting and praying. You are... Uh, when you have a tough decision you, you need to make, it's, uh, it's good that you fast and pray and ask the Lord to help you through it. It's a tough thing um, when you're making decisions on your own and you don't consult the Lord. In fasting and praying, you are saying you're going without natural sustenance and you are seeking spiritual intervention. You are seeking his presence in you. You're seeking an answer, a resolution from the Lord. And it's a blessing that you do that. 
This is what she wanted all of the people of the Jewish faith to do that were in the area. That is a blessing. That is good that she would first uh, consult the Lord in her situation. So she didn't go and try to go to the king first and then tell them to pray about it. Afterwards, the first thing she did was consult the Lord. This is how we should do. In all of our situations, first we need to come to the Lord and ask him about it and ask for him to help us. And it, and if need be, you need to um, come together in prayer and, and fasting as well, um, um, ridding yourself of distraction that can cause you to uh, be um, outside of the will of the Lord. Anything that can cause you to lose your concentration on this big decision you have to make or this uh, uh, problem that you are going through. Fast and pray as Esther did. And three days later, um, Esther, she carried out her determination. She came in her royal robes and she entered into the uh, inner court to the palace just across from the king's house. She was going before the king and she passed uh, the king. He was seated on his royal throne facing the entrance and no one could enter the inner court without being noticed. This is uh, something that she was going to do. She was reaching a point of no return. She could not go back. Um, if you go in there and the king does not request of you, he could cause for your, your death to come because he did not tell you to come. And no one knows why the king had gone a month without requesting her presence, but when he saw her standing in inner court, he was suddenly glad to see her. She obtained favor in his sight. He held out his golden scepter and, uh, and Esther, she approached and touched the tip and the immediate danger evaporated. The blessing of the king's favor was now reality and all the Jews were, would be saved. The favor came and the favor would continue as uh, Haman's plot unraveled. He could not let, uh, he could not get this to pass because the king um, put favor upon the Jews. God put something inside of that king to soften his heart. He intervened in that situation by fasting and praying, by asking the Lord to help them, by being obedient to what the Lord wanted us to do. She was blessed and her people were blessed. No matter the, the danger she put herself in, no matter what could have happened, she stepped out on her faith and the Lord blessed her. This is how we need to do. If we are dealing with something, we are going through something, we are having immediate danger, we need to step out on faith, trust the Lord, and ask him about it. He'll ask him for his help. He is our help. He will bring us through if we keep our faith and, and trust that he will do it. And then in the midst of that, we pray and ask him and, and be patient, waiting on him. He will give a resolution. He can make your enemy your footstool. He can make a tough situation turn into a blessed situation. He can soften somebody's heart who's coming against you. He's able. We have to always trust in him and believe that he's able to do it and he will come through just as he came through for us. To. Amen. Well, I know I've been blessed. I hope you have as well. Have a blessed uh, Sunday and God uh, be with you. Amen.